say. Hello everyone and welcome to another good old Teppin video. I'm here with Zenrot. Oh. It took everything in me and to not say uh, Teppin to the Grand Tour, everyone. <laughs> We're here for another. <laughs> um, oh, you should have. I should have. It's too late now. Anyway, day the Day of Nightmares has finally come and passed, I guess, now technically. Um, the new pack is here. Everything's cool. There was more. The Day of Nightmares. Yes, there were more cards than expected. Um, mainly because they didn't show everything. I guess we kind of all expected uh, what was going to be there. But just to do a quick run through. What do you think are the the most important cards that they didn't really talk about? That they didn't really talk, talk about. Not that talk, didn't show. Most of them. That's, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I think they just didn't properly show the four. Four mana purple. No, they didn't. actually was going to end up being uh, that. That didn't get a whole lot of traction. Being incredible, and also I don't think they ever showed ascension ceremony. No, they never opinion. did. That was the ascension ceremony, which was is basically the lock key for the full board uh, team. Yeah, it's it's really good. <laughs> it's real good. They showed outnumbered, but they did not show uh, the ascension ceremony uh another one is zeku which zeku just gives you explore for combo and he's a red five at 210 they never showed him he's insanely good and then the other one they didn't show yeah, super good. And he's a common which is just crazy yeah and speaking of another common there's maki who was a one seven combo as well at three drop mm -hmm. yep so it was it was it was a it was a very like surprising time to wake up. Another good one, um, may, not because it's like uh, groundbreaking, but it's hilarious. Is that it's a two card common drop for uh, X. It's auto heal. It gives one HP every five. Oh, seconds. heal is incredible. Uh, it's really what I, I kind of feel like that should have been included in X's base set. <laughs> like that's how. Yeah, uh, it's really good though. Like <laughs> it's. Like, oh, maybe I don't want to say too good, but it's probably one of his best cards. Definitely will be one of those ones that I think will stay with him for a very long time. Like, just because the like, it's really good, especially if um, once you start getting your stuff all set up, the only thing that can really stop you at that point is like pure destruction. So, if you're not, if you're fighting, exactly, yeah, if you're not fight, if you're fighting someone like, um, I guess Morgan with Dark Destruction or you're fighting Wesker, those are your two big, like, actual things that can kill you. Otherwise, like, that thing will just continuously keep getting attack and H HP every turn, and it's amazing. Uh, I'm trying to think of, like, some of that. I think there was some purple ones that they didn't show. Oh, you know what was the, the black unit that is a five that gives corrosion as well? What is what is his name? Um, uh, William shit, Bergen. Know, there's a second corrosion guy. It's really yeah. good. Three six five, yeah. and you get to explore for corrosion, and he is better than the um the other guy who was just a four drop. There you go, better than vile MK two. And then they also gave something called Disease Souls, which is really funny because it destroys a unit, it destroys any unit on the board, and then replaces them with a zombie. Ah, good card. <laughs> yeah, real good card. Yeah. Some good stuff for here now. And now, obviously, if we wanted to go through all of them, it'd be a real hassle. Those are the ones that are currently jumping through my mind. I'm trying to say, oh, Trish. Trish is a four uh, epic uh, uh, resonate one plus one plus one attack one and HP six. That's another one for purple. Yeah, Trish is good. Um, a little, little slow, but she is good. And she definitely did not get showed off enough because she's like to a lot of purple having to use all their mana and then running out of mana and getting fucked if you destroy one of their minions. Yeah. Way to, to help get around that, so. Definitely. There's also Sting Chameleon, who is a 5-drop 2-9, just gives you stealth, so you don't have to deal with Ada and her dying. Still think you gotta go Ada in that setup, just because she's cheaper. Yeah, I guess it is better to have cheaper stuff. And then there's you're not also... playing. You're not playing Sting Chameleon for his, uh there you know, you know you're just trying to get that card on the board it's true it's true and then there's also menat who is a three drop one nine and then if she ever deals damage she get to explore for weakness when she's a common which is uh, i think she might be the highest um health drop for a cheap unit on purple now 
Uh, I don't know for sure, but that that was true. Yeah, I'm trying to think of someone who costs around the same much, but yeah. Uh, and then there's also Hell Vanguard, who's two six and is like um, a five drop. He's not very good, but he does return to the EX pocket when he dies. So he's like, um, what's his nuts? Nemesis for Dark, but yeah, not as good. <laughs> well, he has flight, so maybe you can use slightly more use of him or something, but. Yeah, he's that's... good for that. Like, uh, have you ever fought the cheesy Morrigan deck that's like all little tiny flying minions and they just run a bajillion halts and temptation as the skill? Yes, I have. Hanging over your head over and over again while not letting you play. Yes. He's a good card for that. Yeah, definitely for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Another one is also Vengeance. I don't get to see this as played as often, but if it deals two damage to an enemy unit and then if you explore it at least once, it deals five instead and it's three cost. I see it every once in a while, but uh, not too often. And then also Unleash, give plus two attack to a friendly unit. If your explore count is three or higher, also give flight. So I think that's the basic rundown of the stuff that, at least these are the stuff I've been seeing in the actual uh, ranked mode as I've been trying to like learn the game again. As I try and, so I don't know how your experience has been, Zen, but I'll tell you my experience with Day and Nightmare so far, which is basically I've entered Deck Crisis. I don't know what <laughs> what to run anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, I know that. Uh, I know that that will, life. Uh, right now, I'm rocking. Um, I don't th- think he's great. Mm-hmm. Some gameplay. Everyone's like, "Oh my God, X is good now," and I'm like, "No, <laughs> no." X is confident but now. Is, I think that's fair. You don't fair feel to like a complete idiot when you use him now. No. You could say prior to this. Um, before Day of Nightmares, it was definitely like if you saw an X and a higher up, you kind of went like, okay. And then you Yeah, exactly, up. exactly. It, it didn't never, feel good. No. And then <laughs> before you, that. Yeah, and even if he drew very good. If you ever want to see the typical X play, you need to check out my... Uh, when I was check- trying out my Suicide Nergigante, which is a bad, de- which was a bad deck when I made it, I fought against an X player. I drew horribly for about mm, six minutes, and then at the six minutes thirty seconds mark, I drew good, and then X immediately lost. Yeah, that is X life. That is how he lives. To so deal with it, like it sucks because X, catch that is good and usable and fun and then he plays a real deck and you're like oh right yeah then he's still this character it all comes tumbling down uh so we'll go down we'll go down specifically i want to say the heroes for now so if we feel any of them have been kind of changed or not i'll start with ryu because i think he's the easiest has ryu changed at all because i want to say no (laughs) no um you can kind of run agnactor Mm-hmm. He's the new. That's kind another card we didn't. Uh, that was never shown. He's the th- uh, the four drop, right? Four drop deal three uh, damage. I'm not 100 percent sure on his mana. He he does three damage to a single enemy minion that's random. I pulled it up right here so people can now see Agnactor right there. Perfect. So four drop yeah, three so three. He's sort of like Legiacris. I I think he's better than Legiacris personally. Yeah. Personally, hmm. it, it depends. I, I guess you could make the argument that he's not <laughs> the, the the lower health pool does not help against i guess specifically a ryu matchup but having three health the, makes him avoid wesker's fucking annoying two drop thing it basically stops the two drop one that the that kills a two attack a, a um creature and he also because he's four he avoids that as well so he has to actually like deal damage to him to kill him and he's able to stop us yeah i think ignactor is really solid <laughs> yeah i i think that he uh is good I mean, but, like, you don't run the risk of whiffing and then having nothing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Someone, at least you're going to hit them, right? Definitely. They have to worry about, uh, whereas the guy, Chris, can really screw you over. Okay. And as we do this, because I like to play um, while I record about it, just so I have my head in the game. Perfect. I want to send a Discord of uh, what I just did with X. It's very important. Okay. Let me see what you sent here. I'm going to see if I can put it up in the video as we're going real, real time. Get, just look at this shit, dude. <laughs> this is the kind of shit X can get up to if you if he can get going. 
holy crap what is even going on in this <laughs> that's just a lot of like on one thing <laughs> I'll set it look up. At, for... Look at all the stuff that, that X has. That is insane. I'm dropping the picture down now so people can see it and we can talk about it. Yeah, again, I think definitely X has gotten um, better. It's funny, when he when he's actually up and running, which is what I realized when I started using X, is that X still falls to the trap that he's X. But when he's on full cylinders and he's rocking it, he's amazing. Okay, let's see. Yeah, X is one of the decks... I think it's really hard when he really gets going. Now that he has the ability to get going, whereas before, like, you never did. Exactly. There you go. Now people can see. Uh, you can look at that Advanced Artifact X, which I think has absolutely every ability known to man. Has two revenge buffs. Uh, he has a buff from one of the new black cards. I don't remember what it's called. I think it's G Adult or something like oh, that. Oh, damn it. So that means he constantly makes Where, the little uh, fucking asshole thing. Every every time he takes damage, he makes a little baby. Yeah, he has two different uh, and then forms he has two revenge. different revenge buffs, and you get an MP when he you get two MP when he dies, which obviously he never will because look at his stats. He's at eleven nine in that picture. You can't yeah. see the health. You can see the. But attack. he's at eleven nine. He has agility. He has veil because I have Gaia armor on. When he dies, you would he would have gotten plus four attack for revenge, and after he died and put little baby. Have that little baby underneath the surrender Man. icon how why did he do this why did he put i don't understand maybe it really was just like he knew that there was no way to win this one unless he got ouroboros it looks like he's using ouroboros right so he'd need devil he is, to like, yeah he is. actually that that well he the, didn't even have devil though he uh he ouroboros the guy that makes the babies back out oh, the ability twice that sucks that's unfortunate um so yeah as you can see here x kicking it strong let's get back to ryu for... compete. yeah uh just get back to ryu i really think that's it that's basically that's the one dude that's been added it's another monster hunter and i don't really see any change to his deck actually i've seen um some reuse use lightning bolt which is really annoying because they deal too damage dungeon ranky use lightning bolt but not uh shinku Hado. okay yeah. i've never seen them use that yeah, I, I specifically fought that one. They used Lightning Bolt over and over and over again, which was really fucking annoying to deal with because they just constantly got yeah, that Lightning Bolt. Oh, do they constantly get it lit mm -hmm. anytime you play anything? Yeah, because that's uh, best in rank and gives, uh, what is it, plus, is it plus two or plus one? Uh, Dungeon Ranky is plus two. Uh, okay, yeah, so... Ryu is Ryu, but Ryu is basically the same. I would almost say that to a fault that Ryu had nothing about Ryu has changed. Really, he's just still good. I mean, that's really is that Ryu was good before, and he's now, good now. Yeah. And let's go on to the next red hero. We'll go by red. We'll go by color. The next red hero is uh, Rathalos, which I feel like Rathalos just got new combo dudes to deal with, and he also got more explore cards to go with. Like now he has Zeku, who can now give just anyone in the world combo if he wants. Yeah, he's basically just more consistent, uh, uh, but it's a little expensive. Yeah, he's hugely changed, to be honest. Um, I think he's still good right now where these decks are going to end up because it is only day two. Yeah, it is only day two. We're real early on. Yeah, but I think uh, I think red in general, other than Jill, changed of any deck right now. I want to hear your thoughts on this one. If we removed the green card that let him auto attack, do you think Raph Awoken would automatically go down a tier? Absolutely. Okay. So here's my next uh, thing I want to say. Can we fucking ban that card? <laughs> because it's one card. Yeah, it... uh, that card's really good. Um, the frustrating thing about that card, talking about this a lot, lot lately, with about black being the only color that has on-demand destruction. Yep. The frustrating thing about that card is there's only two ways to deal with it. You destroy the minion. It's the only counterplay to that card. So automatically, only black can outright kill it, or uh, purple can halt it. 
be snipe it if it doesn't have shield, which Rathalos runs because it's a green hybrid. Yep. It's not consistent counterplay to that card. I guess technically you could seal him in the combo, but he's still going to either hit face or kill whatever minion is there. Or yeah. face. Yeah. It's it's. Mana. Isn't it one mana? It is one mana. That thing costs one mana. It's so good. So good. I I know Teppen has a ban a current ban list, and I would say if you were gonna ban uh, either ban or limit some stuff. I would hit every single color in some way. And if there was one thing I would hit for green, it'd be that card. Because really, I think only really Raph uses it. And Raph uses it to such an ability that he just wins the game. And it's the most annoying. It's the closest thing we have to an OTK in Teppin because it is the most annoying thing to deal with. Because I go, okay, you have one of these. Do you have two? And then the second I see uh, the my, 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 my screen freeze, I hit surrender. Because I'm like, fuck this. And I don't know why I even bother trying to see if I can. Was the Invitational by chance? I did not see the Invitational. Oh, so they me. were playing a game. Uh, it was Spooky against, I believe his name is Manga. Because mm-hmm. so, I was fighting game players versus card game players. I only know the fighting game players. Fair enough. But they were playing, and Spooky's opponent was playing Rathalos. He had, uh, he was playing Red Green Wrath. I, I for you. Um. And, I mean, the match was over. Spooky had the game. Yes. Top deck, three copies of that card in a row. Uh, I already know where this is going. He just drew, well, no, he lost. Oh, okay, thank God. Like 0.1 second because he didn't build up enough mana to play the third copy. If he had just had that little bit more mana, he would have come from being completely lost to winning the game. Card three times other card in this game that has that kind of impact yeah and it's 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 something that like it's the one because i feel like fighting regular wrath awoken when he doesn't have that card is fine it's literally that one card that feels like it's the most cheap thing in the world because for the most part there's no counterplay there's no counterplay and for most cards it feels like there is some form of counterplay and it really sucks when it's like this one entire deck is built around this one card, and if it did not have this one card, this deck would be. This deck would not be right. as good. And as then it you gotta think is. like. Think of other high impact cards, right? Yeah. So think of like Obliterate, high impact card. It's super good. Yeah. Six. It get yeah, cost six. Reckless Charge costs one. It I... cost a ton of mana because there is counterplay to it. You can't make it cost like three. Why does it cost one mana? I think I, think, I don't approve. Yeah, I think changing it to three would at least help. Because here's another thing that you use one reckless charge, and then if for whatever reason they don't have enough mana, if you decide to use a card right afterwards, they can just reckless charge because they get two free mana. And then even then, they will only have used half their mana pool that they get for free when an opponent plays a card. It is uh, yeah. I mean, it is obviously they did not uh, see Wrath Awoken being as crazy as it is, but I think now that it is, I think either either you can change the card, like um, nerf the card a bit, or if you really don't want to nerf the card, then I would say just outright like limit it to just one or something. Not an out if you don't want to outright uh, ban something, it, like because I don't think Wrath of the, that one card uh, charge readiness is so good that it like changes the entire meta landscape. It's just like not fun to play against. That's the main problem with it. Yeah, it's it's, it's very anti anti interaction. Um, yeah, but then again, I I feel I don't feel like I would recommend banning it just because I don't think Wrath of Woken is the best deck. No, it's not a card in a deck that's not and you're not hitting the best deck. Then there's a problem. So I I don't know. Yeah, I, about it. It. I just think the card's ridiculous. I just don't like it because anytime I'm not playing Wesker, it becomes the biggest thorn in my fucking side. <laughs> Which is, like you said, the overall problem of only black has destruction. Yeah, and only purple has halt. Yep, and if I'm not running either of those, then Wrath becomes basically a game of how quickly can I kill you before this becomes unwinnable for me? Or can I see yeah, you yeah. faster? Can I, can I kill you before you draw that enough times that I just die? 
basically. I can be up. And, and you know, Wrath of Woken is such a good ability because it stacks up over time. It's not... It, 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 it's nowhere near as good, but it reminds me of the old spike launch where, like, and you're charging back up. It's still going. And it's a set value. And that shit is going to hit you for seven the first time and the last time that he uses it. But if Wrath top decks that card, Carlos at 1 9, and then he hits him for plus six and twice, that's 28 of your 30 life. And then you also, about it. we forgot also to mention some of the one of the new card, which is State of Nothingness, which is basically just does what Rathlos does, except for <laughs> it's a so two cost like, legendary. Yeah. Yep. And that's actually been another thing of like it. They actually got a good significant buff where the deck is not like. Uh, I guess it is possible to brick, but maybe now your bricking is a little bit less. Um, it's a little bit lessened because now you can use some other cards as well that are actual monsters that you can play. Uh, it's still possible yeah. to brick, but you know, it is what it is. That is bad. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be really bad. And I think that's Wrath. The other two modes of Wrath have not changed. They're still unplayed. <laughs> so in- uh, the only time I've ever seen the other two get played, people brought Blazing Wall because it, wrath awoken hmm okay um I, was anything but... I should also mention you are because of my bad internet lately you are kind of going a little funky right now every other word i'm hearing currently oh, am i am i clipping <laughs> a little bit uh it's it's fine it was right. fine until uh... recently all right fair enough well hopefully it hopefully it fixes yeah, hopefully. Speaking of needing fixing, let's move on to the next red hero. That's Jill. Uh, she didn't really need fixing other than the fact that the only deck she really had was a not-as-good version of Wrath, I want to say. Or no, it was not a good... Either uh, way. So old Jill was just shitty Ryu. Yes, that is correct. Because all she had really was... Rocket launcher. Um, because, because all the explorers sucked. Mm-hmm. Because there were none, really, except for her basics. And antibody activation was like... You didn't have enough explorers to use it. Now, the game has changed. Now there are plenty of new explorers to use it on. Uh, especially... The... Uh, yes. Uh, I want to go on record and say that I think explorer is not that good. As just out the gate. I think explorer is really expensive. For not that much value. It was good. I think it's a little tough with specific units like the Legendary Jail, who is like all about um, having multiple people use combo. Uh, uh, not combo, using Explore. But then the problem is that she costs five and there's not a lot of like... Like the cheap drop Explore dudes make it very actually kind of tough to get her all the way up to the third time so you have to specifically run a deck that exploits the fact that you can constantly use explore over and over and over again yeah it's i when using that jill before to get her to max value i've had to actually like the the one cost type thing you know Mm -hmm. where you where you make the unit explore i've had to waste those just to get the explore counter to go up or on things like claire because a lot of the times Drop your explorers really early, and you have nothing to use them on because the minions that do those baby explorers kind of suck. Yeah, they're not like sitting there alive, ready to fight. You know what I mean? No, the best that the the, uh, the explorer ones, the ones that can most stay alive, is Carlos, and that's only because you can get shields over and over and over again. But every other unit, it gets yes. really tough because they're like um, they're one fives to start with, and then if your opponent is like. Especially, maybe this is specifically if you're playing against a Wesker. If they wait, if they time it just right, they can just tyrant it and destroy your entire field. And it's like, well, shit. Absolutely. It's one specific. It's one specific thing that happens, but I don't know. And uh, I'll say specifically for Reds, the, there's a big problem that I think it's real fucked up, and I understand why. Because if they did this, it would have been too good. But Zeku's explore for combo doesn't give him anything else when agility gives plus one plus one. 
Yeah, I think you can't, can't really like that. You know, like if but, yeah. It, and I think if you overplay it, it would be a problem. Um, I don't know by how I'm going to say a problem. Sorry, say that again. You uh, got lost there for a bit. Oh, sorry. I think that I don't think it's a problem, but I, I think it would be too good. Okay, I see what you're saying. You're saying um, it'd just be too good if there was like a plus one with plus additional one, benefits. Yeah, yeah. To, to combo specifically. Combo. Combo is a real uh, fucked up one because, as we've seen, like the Rathalos is able to survive because of the strength of combo. It is because combo is so good that he's able to do anything that he does. And if combo was, uh, if there was any way to I make combo, if combo didn't exist, what would you even do? It yeah. Nothing. No, it'd, it'd take too long for you to actually like. You'd actually then at that point, like, because you can see what happens when you take combo away from uh, Rathalos is that he becomes less of a threat. He becomes more of like easy to deal with because now you don't have to worry about him constantly um, screwing your shit up. So I get, I get it, I get the idea why combo. Um, doesn't give plus one plus one but then it also makes it real unfortunate for someone like jill who has to rely on for the most part reds um the reds combo unless there's because again we're two days in so maybe there will be a there will turn out that there's another like form of um explore for jill out there but for now it's like hmm. it's something else so i would say at least now i like that yeah i like i do think antibody activation is really good yeah, I think I, it's a really good ability because yeah. I because Dimitri, but like she reminds me of purple, it's expensive. So you dump a lot of mana to get one really good guy, dies because it's really easy to pick off minions in this game. Yeah, it builds around a long time so that like eventually out of stuff to deal with her minions and then she's gonna drop somebody big and she doesn't take as long to set up as jill does like a morgue dex ibuki she can just start going mm. all right i gotta uh drop two of these explorers and then i gotta drop the jill the jill legendary and then i gotta drop another explorer so i can it's a lot i, I think that her deck just needs to be refined I, I don't think it's refined at all yet no and also the unfortunate thing about Dimitri is that he has a five cost. So that means automatic destruction from Wesker if you're fighting dark destruction. Yep. Yep, yep. So, so it's things to think Four about. Dex is really good for fate defying Ryu. <laughs> yeah, that too. Uh fate defying Ryu also gets crazy uh buff cuz cuz you're using so many damn ability cards. <laughs> Action cards. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. He does so much damage because of that, that it gets kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so we'll definitely still see where Jill ends up. I do like that Jill is now different from Ryu and Rathalos for the most part, so that's nice. She plays different enough where I go, at least you're not all copies of each other. You've avoided the Dante situation where well, when Dante was released, he was just worse Morgan. And that's not like even a slight Oh yeah, Dante. poor Dante. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the the other guys here. Uh, let's go for green. We've already really talked about X. X is kind of he, he's not as good as Chun Li. That's why I'm starting with X. X now has stuff that he can do, and that's I think the best you can say for X now. Uh, I I think X is really fun right now. Yeah, when he's for worried. what it's worth. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for what it's worth, I think X is really fun right now. Um. I don't know. I guess that's all I really have to say about it. Is a I think... shocking uh, declaration, but he's fun. That that that's usually enough for some people. So that that's enough for me as well. I really like X. I just uh, that when the day comes when the next pack releases and X gets insanely good, <laughs> he's gonna get there eventually. Just wait. Uh, now let's actually go on to Chun Li. One which... of these days gotta get there yeah 
So here's the crazy thing about Chun-Li that I noticed. I think Chun-Li is the only unit that I see in um, Ranked where I see all three different forms of her ability. I see the I see her kicks, I see Yawn, and I see her shield as well. I see all three abilities from Chun-Li. And yeah, she's the-, the shield is definitely the least popular. Yeah. Um, not that it's bad. Bad. But it's not the one that you see often. Yeah, mainly because uh, its entire gimmick can be destroyed by running against a black hero, and that kind of is no fun. <laughs> against a lot of other decks, it's pretty solid, but then when you run against yeah. the Wesker... <laughs> it's not great. No, it's not fun at all. So she's the one who's taken over the fill the entire board thing. So Ascension Ceremony that turns everyone into a 3-6... Uh, is amazing and it's so good and it's won me so many games and it's also cost me I think I think it's cost my opponent to play differently where they're like okay well I need to do something to prevent this entire field becoming 3-6 but then I don't think they realize that the second you play the card uh, and you have a full board it targets all three of them so if you destroy the other two it's not like um it's not like specific Wesker cards that like are like you have to destroy one of your units and then um, uh, and then destroy an enemy. And if they destroy if you destroy that um, dude before he can activate that effect, then he doesn't get to destroy your person. When you activate Ascension Ceremony, when it checks that there's three, it doesn't matter that there's no longer three when it affects resolves. It doesn't matter. So it just automatically just turns whatever's yeah, left standing at three six. Drops down. It's going. Yes, exactly. Uh, so they can't prevent it because the requirement had already been met, I think, is the basic thing I'm trying to say here. Uh, once yeah. once a little that little blue rectangle is on the card, <laughs> like, yeah, not going to go off like that is if you... Uh, it's basically like if an effect has to happen on an opponent. So, like, the West... Like, uh, what's it called? Just... Or it's nuke a minion on both sides. Yeah, just desserts. Uh, just desserts is the yeah, one that's that specifically not going to go says, off yeah. if if you kill the sacrifice because that's part of its cost. Exactly. But are the same. Yeah, it's different. It's a very different thing. I completely forgot to mention this unit because I saw this unit when I was doing my pack openings and I was like, this seems unfair. Um, Layer. She is a four drop, a one five shield MP boost. Layer is so good. Oh my god, she's <laughs> unbelievable. I can't believe they didn't show Layer. Uh, they didn't show Layer to stop people from freaking out about Layer. Is what I think. Layer's incredible. This card is what disgusting. What the fuck levels of like? What is this card? Yeah, she's so good. And she's rare, too. So it's like, oh, she also deals deep damage to a random enemy unit with flying. Um, it's, made, it's, you know, this this card is so stupid good. And that's another reason why um, kind of Chun-Li has been allowed to run rampant for a bit, at least in the early goings, is that they just have so much fucking boost, man. It is, un, it is all borderline unstoppable when you have, like, you have to deal with Layer, the fucking Palico, and then Iris are all on the field at the same time. And it's like, well, they have 10, man. They have 10. What am I going to do? Yep. There's really not that much that you can do about it. Uh, design. It's a really strong, really good card. Like, Mana Ramp was already really good. Mm. There's really nothing you could do about it, right? Like, Mana Ramp got started. You, you just started getting what were you going to do? And then we're in the situation where and now the ramps goes because she actually um, does 30 instead of 20. And she has a shield fires for direct damage. She's Iris, but she has like less or more onboard application. Yeah. Uh, and then also because of, I want to say, I don't know, I feel like per- before Day of Nightmares, there was not a lot of Chris play, and now I see Chris everywhere. And I want to say it's just because the Chris, mana ramp is so... Fun. Sorry, say that again? I feel like Chris really struggles with 
kind of the same things he did before. Mm-hmm. Very, very much a win more card. Yeah, it is. So that's inherently bad. But um, I'm not a huge fan of Chris personally. Mm. But though I don't like fighting Chris. He's real fucking annoying. <laughs> Because it stops. Yeah. No, uh, I get that. Totally. Yeah. And here's the other green card that they did not show off, which is uh, it deserves, deserves some mention. Blanca, and he gets he gets to deal six damage to a random enemy with flight, and then his counter damage is plus four. So um, Blanca's good. Yeah. Uh, he's weird, and, and I think correct me if I'm wrong. In that mechanic before. This is the first time I've seen anyone that does specifically where they said... Like, I didn't understand when I... Um, this is, again, if you go back to my pack openings. It's a very good video. Check it out. Leave a like, subscribe, comment, do all that good stuff. Anyway, um, he's the first unit that, like, specifically is weak in attack. But when you counter him, he's he's a fucking 5-7. So when you go to attack him, he's a 5-7. And when he's attacking, he's a 1-7. Which I want to say is a reference when you... to... Mm -hmm. You're getting, like, lit up. up. Yeah. 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 That has to be a reference to the fact that Blanca is the one of the most annoying defensive characters to fight in Street Fighter Two because his fucking shield because of his fucking like a shock shit. So, I don't know if it is, but it would be very funny. I'm willing to say that it is. Yeah, I I'm willing say, to sign off on that just for the just for the lore. Yeah, for the lore reasons, I think that is the reason why Blanca has counter damage plus four is because. He is one of the most annoying defensive characters to actually fight against someone who knows how to use Blanca. And this is my, uh, the, maybe this is uh, my being colored by my um, seven-year-old version of me fighting Blanca in Street Fighter Two or something. <laughs> so, and being angry at the AI of what he had. To <laughs> yeah, do. maybe. But yeah, the Chun Li is uh, insanely good. She was already pretty solid. I would say she's even more solid now because you have spillover. And um, also, it turned out that Kushala, and this is a buff to both of them, Kushala is also extremely good and hard to deal with. Oh, Kushala Deora is insane. Yeah. Once he gets going to deal with him, you just lose. Like, you just lose. Yeah. When when I fought against him and I had no idea what he really... Like, I, I knew what Kushala was because we talked about him. But I was like, oh, it's just Kushala. And then I was like, hmm... I'm suddenly having flashbacks to Yadagarasu, and I feel like this is specific. I feel like that feeling of getting Yada locked, where it's like, I'm not drawing anything helpful. I'm just drawing the same shit over and over and over again. Yep. The same little minion that's in retaliation, like they did before. Uh, yeah. So, Green is definitely in a very good place, I'd say, right now. And. It's a uh, green is also I think a lot of I think I want to try and maybe if it, it depends because I, I like I said I'm having such a hard time figuring out exactly who I want to go to because every time I play start playing some green I run into one Wesker and I go running to a different unit completely it's like there's no real answer that it, the answer is that no matter who you're fighting you're going to lose unless you're a Ryu in which case you're kind of solid against every single person in the game. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think really has matchups where he's not that favored, but being not that favored is a weak complaint. Yeah, it is a very weak complaint. He's the only guy in the whole world that stupid. Yeah, and it's, he's probably going to stay that way for a good bit. I don't, I don't see um, that changing anytime soon. Oh uh, no, I agree. He, he's too good at what he does. Yes. Just like actual Ryu in Street Fighter, he's just kind of at the out the gate kind of good. Yeah, uh, exactly. There's really no fighting against it. So there we go. And that is it for green units. Uh, let's go on to purple. And we'll start with Dante because I want to see if as the as the as the number one Dante main that I know, how do you feel about has Dante actually changed for you in this uh, in with Day of Nightmares? Do you think uh, he now plays different from Morgan? Good question. Um, sort of. Cards mm -hmm. out there now makes better use of Morgan does. Like, I think that Tigrex is a real that is better suited than it is to Morgan. Because mm. Morgan is more dependent on her ape or on her act. 
because once you get going in a center lane and just say all right it, uh, devil trigger what are you going to do hi Rex, and you can't bait bait dante into burn whereas with morgan protect yourself from that temptation and you're not running temptation <laughs> you know mm-hmm. i i think that they now can play a little bit more aggressively than morgan can cards out now that allow him to do that um the decks are still 99 percent, but i think morgan is gonna stir more than dante who's gonna use tigrex more mm-hmm. to do that yeah and kind Otherwise, of they're about the same i do think if darkness illusion dante will become the ma- the most played purple hmm. temptation so is this under the idea that you think Darkness Illusion? That's his one of his skills, right? From remembering. Darkness Illusion is the Morgan hard removal ability. Oh, okay, okay. I see what you mean. I'm she kills everybody that's halted. Oh, that's right. Okay. Okay, I get what you mean now. Um, also, another thing from Purple, as everyone kind of expected, Jury is the runaway kind of success for Purple. And this is really Jury dumb. Jury is maybe the best card in the game. Yes. Maybe? Pretty close to it. And then also kind of funny that I think Hunk is in the exact slip, the exact opposite spectrum. That I think maybe Hunk is one of the worst. Hunk is terrible. But here's the funny he thing is about... so expensive, and he has such a dog shit ability. He does. But let me tell you something that is really funny that I read into that I did not know that this is the way Hunk worked. Um. So... If a you if if both you and an ally are taking damage at the same time and you don't have a shield, the second your your um, ally dies to damage, which also would mean Hunk is gonna die to damage, he gets plus one plus one and a shield and he takes no damage. That's pretty good. It's it's funny in that I was like I was like ah oh, shit the, here's the problem with Hunk is that when there's nothing on the board he's a two two nothing I'm about to get fucking rocked because uh, Wesker's using that ability that says I'm gonna kill both these dudes right now and then what happened was is that Hunk survived and the ally died and I was like what what the fuck I had no idea that you worked this way Hunk yeah I th- um Hunk is just a meme like he's a gimmick he, yeah deck is good the four man deck but yeah. i think that hunk is the meme card and he's unfortunately their legendary yeah what a wasted legendary jury makes up for it though it's one of those things where it's like it had to be like all right hunk has to suck because jury's too good yeah uh just speaking of making jury good imagine if jury was a four so she fit into that engine perfectly <laughs> instead of being a five yeah It'd be yeah. it'd be sick. It'd be crazy. So yeah, that's kind of part of her being a five is that you can burn any purple hybrid, which is scary at some point. Yeah. Oh, and here's something I just wanted to mention because I think it's pretty funny. Um, Sacrificial pawn. It gives plus one plus one. It's a two cost, and then you give them a bio weapon capsule. Um, here's the thing that's good about this card is that it forces your opponent to have a shitty ex card. <laughs> Because if you're playing purple, all you need oh, to do... Oh, yeah! It's, is that the, the one that drops the bio capsule in your yeah, your enemy's EX yes. pocket? It's a zero one, and I oh, realized... so good. Yeah. So if you use this, and um, specifically your enemy is like someone who specifically needs their EX pocket, um, if they don't... Because a lot of people won't play it because it's they look at it and it goes, this is bad, I'm not going to play it. Um, but if they don't play it, it stays in their EX pocket forever. So that means that they're forever limited to one. But then if they do play it and you're a purple person, you just constantly halt that bioweapon capsule. And now you have like an Ojama basically on their field that can never be um, uh, removed because you just constantly halt it over and over and over again. Uh, obviously, it's a it's a rare card. It's not, I'm not saying like it's groundbreaking. I just think it's really funny and um yeah i can see yeah, that's that's true it's a, it's similar to what i think uh, hunk is which is that it's a meme card except for it's better than hunk because it's a meme that actually works 
All right, and then finally, let's go to the last two guys. Um, Black, I want to say, specifically, we'll start with Nergigante. I just don't know. Nergigante is in a weird place right now where I don't know if he's going to get any better or worse, and it's going to depend on once I actually try and make the um, dive bomb team, if Nergigante has anything besides just a constant nerfed uh, spike launch to call his only ability. Um... But it's tough. I know for Wesker specifically, um, I feel like Wesker hasn't changed at all either. I really don't think Black got anything. Wesker just kind of changed up his minion arsenal. He plays exactly the same way. Yeah. He just has different... He has different options and stuff. I will say I ended up liking um, uh, Vega and what's the other guy? What's the other dinosaur called? What is his name? Um... Duh. Dinosaur? And uh, Janeth. Bagel Goose? No, not Bagel Goose. And Janeth. Oh, and Janeth. And Janeth. Uh, they, both get, they both get Cruelty, and Cruelty ends up being a pretty good card, except for when you're fighting against people who um, uh, constantly buff their HP, because then, bu- then it's a bummer, but it actually ends up being uh, surprisingly solid, I'll say, in my practice of it. Um... Here's a really fun deck that I saw. I fought against it once and I almost lost to it, but I didn't lose to it because it ended up being um it couldn't work out. So you know that um that Nergigante card that is when you play it you take I think what is it, three hit three damage away? Is that is that what it does? I don't remember. It's like a Switch card. It's a, it's a Nergigante that's not zero one. It's his common card. Oh, his basic? Yes, his basic one. Um, I fought against a Wesker who, no joke, ran two of them and then constantly kept reviving the fucker over and over and over again. <laughs> and I was like, this is insane. Because it turns out that I think that card that says, like, um, what is it? Put a card in your graveyard, but then it gets minus one, minus one. And I looked at it and said... Well, it's so random. How do you stop that? Forgetting completely that revenge sends back to the deck. So if you only have one card in your graveyard, then congratulations. You're just going to get this card back over and over and over again. So what he did was just basically... Just forever. Yeah. So he was also running Ouroboros. So he just constantly kept summoning back this Nergigante over and over and over and over again. And I almost like... It, I barely won only because he kept using abilities that like, um, you know, take um, health away from him. But I was like, holy shit. Like, maybe I actually should look into... Because uh, Ouroboros currently currently runs on the fact that you only have, like, one... Um, you only have you only have one card that really sends to the graveyard, and then you get that, and then you get it back. And then, it, then you're all good, right? Um, but then the thing that I realized is, like, what if you just constantly didn't have to wait for um, Ouroboros to be ready? <laughs> what if you just got back... Uh, for example, Devolo, who would it think be, let's see, he's a 6-8, right? He's a 6-8, um, regularly? 6-8 with Rush, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if he got revived back, he would become a 5-7 with Rush? <laughs> Correct. So I think that's still pretty good. Maybe in my mind I was like, you know, maybe it's not worth it. But then I realized a 5-7 is still a 5-7. Yeah, five seven is a big body, for sure. So it, just having a big body is like it doesn't even need to be this some kind of crazy ability. Just having big numbers on the board, incredible. But having a big body on the board that you have to deal with is is a problem. Yeah, and not a lot of uh, decks can really handle them. The only one I can say that is I think perfect for handling them is uh, Morgan and Dante who are the only dudes in the entire world who can actually, like, stop and breathe for a bit. <laughs> because Dante has the ability of just, like, hey, can we chill out here for a bit? Okay, cool. Okay, now I'm ready to play uh, how again. How about I block one attack cycle? Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Let me just breathe for a bit. Let me, okay. Strategy figured out. Let's get this done. And Morgan just halts everything to the ends of the earth. But um, other than that, yeah, I'm just kind of, like, not feeling. Like, I think... um. I don't think Basil Geist works currently with the Explore cards that Black has. Like, it takes too much to set up, and then everyone... If you fight against Chun-Li, Basil Geist is useless. Because <laughs> it only yeah, takes... Yeah, uh, he, uh... I mean, 50, he's good. He's like a counter 
card for like Rathalos, I guess. Yes. But he's so niche for like very specific matchups that I don't see why you could use him. Yeah, so I'm saying I'm sticking with my boy Devil Joe. I think Basil Geist might have his time in the shine if there's ever like an ex- extreme focus on five or lower. But currently, because Chun Li is so strong, like you just automatically always lose that matchup. At least in my eyes, at least in my testing with Basil Geist. Um, and this is also true when you're fighting Counter Wesker and they're using Devilo. Is that ba- Basil Geist has no answer to Devilo because Devilo is extremely uh, high cost. Yeah, Devil Joe is at is is good. Yeah. Um, I don't. Basil Geist was HP based, not like Kushala is. Yeah, yeah. I wish it was kind of HP based too, because I think he'd be slightly better at that point. The problem with MP cost is that uh, if they don't have a unit with that MP cost, and this is something I don't like, is that if I ever feel like I'm not using um, Ouroboros because I can't use it because I'm only can get Basil Geist and they know that and they play to that, then I'm eff- they've effectively locked down my um, ability. Like, it goes both ways. Like, I can lock down the their ability to play anything lower, but then they just play everything higher and everything turns out fine. With Devilo, it's literally just summoning a big-ass thing and then they have to deal with it. <laughs> like, they have to deal with the consequences of what I'm about to do. And they don't have a choice. They have to deal with it. Exactly. So, um, that's how I currently feel about uh, the current place of Black. I'm going to keep going. Um, maybe I'll uh, hit up Kaze and see like how he's running on Black. Kaze is the only other person I trust with Wesker decks because we're both degenerates who love Wesker. <laughs> and constantly yeah, playing. Degenerate is right. Degenerate is the West- correct term. Hey, Mary. I, hate, I hate Wesker dude <laughs> it's okay because i also hate fighting i would ask you to say until the recent uh um uh, hmm, it's half and half i like the morgan fight because it literally turns into who can turn get a better hand uh but i hate fighting rathalos that's the one dude who i was gonna say well i feel the same way about morgan but no the actual answer is i i hate rathalos more i just don't like that matchup at all even though in theory wesker has a ton of yeah, shit well, to... that's where either you win or you lose and that sucks to be you like that's all there is to... yeah yeah so yeah that's that's the current thing that's the current state of tap in uh as of day of nightmares i know the person who asked for this specifically said i think only the new cards and we've given away more than that so hopefully you enjoyed this pretty much so i hope you liked it guy yeah, this is just for you. Uh, the great thing about it is that the person who asked for it, and specifically, I wish I could remember your name. Let me actually go get your name. But he said he gave the preface of, hey, I know that Teppen doesn't do a lot of big numbers, but could I? can you please keep talking about Teppen? I really like it. And I was like, dude. <laughs> I yeah, do- Wookie of all people is stressing over big numbers down here. Yes. Uh... Let me see the the what is it? What is the right thing I'm gonna say? I I specifically do videos for at least like at the most um, five people. I think at the at the base form is that I think uh, if I think at least a couple people like it, then I'll always keep doing it. So Teppen, I will always keep doing Teppen as long as I like Teppen. Um, the style of thing might change depending on how I feel about the current meta. Like, or if I'm still trying to understand it, like, it always take me a while to, like, um, understand specifically, like, like, specifically with Day of Nightmares, I didn't want to rush and start doing videos, uh, because I don't know the current meta. I, I, I literally have to, like, understand what is the meta to happen before I'm confident enough. Like, once I hit champ is when I feel like I have a decent understanding of what, uh, Teppen is currently. And currently Teppen is in a state of, I don't know what's going on. And also his Exactly. Name- his name was Test Account Forty Six, so the perfect name to go with. Uh... <laughs> Ideal, perfect. Um, so again, yeah. If uh, if as long as you like tapping, if you're checking it out, leave always leave a like, leave a comment because I will love to talk to you guys. I love to talk to anyone about anything, even as sometimes the only thing I say is like, "Yeah, cool, awesome." <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll try and say something, man. I always talk back, unless I don't know how to respond back, in which case, congratulations, you have figured out a way to stump me, so. (laughs) With that, I think it's time to say goodbye, everyone. Say goodbye, Zen. 
Hey guys, thank you for watching our video about Teppin. Yeah, and also check out Zen's Teppin stream where he actually gets to win. He wins his games most of the time. I usually go 1-3. <laughs> it's been rough. Oh, by the All way, right. be before we sign out, I really got to tell you, do you want to know what my losing streak was before um, we came here to record? I have lost 20 games in a row. So I'm just permanently stuck Did at eight. Cut oh, sorry. I said I have lost um, 20 games in a row of Teppin. God. I, yeah, I'm in a very, I, like I said, I'm trying to figure out where this bet is going. <laughs> so it's it's, yeah, yeah I, I'm doing pretty good right now with X because I think nobody, I think everyone sees X and they're like, ha, huh, and they don't really try. No. I've a had... little bit of advantage there. Definitely, definitely. And with that, goodbye, everyone. See you later. Bye.